Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over a pretty cool carbine here. This is the Wilson Combat AR9. So a lot of interesting things going on here that we're going to get into uh, coming up when we get into the details of it. But uh, some quick highlights of it. It comes in pistol, uh, a factory SBR, and rifle configuration, which you see here. This is the rifle configuration. Um, it, they're available to take Glock magazines, which this one here does. Also Beretta 92 magazines and Smith & Wesson M&P 9 magazines. So regardless of which pistol you have or prefer or carry, if you want to use those magazines in this rifle, you can order the rifle that will fit those and be off to the races shooting at the range. So that's certainly a cool thing. But what we're going to do now is step back out to the range and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle, then come back in and look at the details. <laughs> caliber carbines folks want to know what kind of velocity you're getting out of your ammo obviously this one here is a 16 inch barrel versus say like a like a glock 19 and uh they want to see basically what the advantage is so first up we're going to run some minute man munitions 115 grain uh total metal jacket stuff the 90 percent of what we use here on the channel for nine millimeter uh just run a few rounds through it in the chronograph let you know what that looks like There you go. Nothing too crazy. Now I'm going to run that exact same load through a Glock 19 so you guys can see that. Oops, try again. There you go. So you can see, even with that 16 inch barrel, you're getting a little bit more uh, velocity out of it. So at some point, this is something I always point out is that you lose velocity with barrel length. So probably a nine millimeter somewhere between the seven to nine uh, inch range, you start to max out your velocity beyond that you lose a little bit. So up next, we're going to put some Wilson combat 147 grain round, 147 grain ammo through it. A little bit slower as you'd expect. And lastly, we're going to put some hot stuff there. The uh, Federal 115 grain plus P plus ammo from uh, sort of early 90s fame, if you will. That stuff's certainly smoking. Now we're going to see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle here. We have a few different loads, the same ones we just chronographed. And we're going to see how it does. We got it in the CTK Precision Rest here. Try to minimize some human error. Primary arms 1x6 scope on there. Sitting in an uh, American Defense Recon mount, which I really like. Uh, that's kind of a side note. But we got the target down range at 50 yards. So the reason I did 50 yards is because with pistol calibers, the wind really likes to push these around. And as you guys can see, it's windy out here today. So we got about a 5 mile an hour full value wind. Shouldn't be too bad at this range though. So same rounds and we'll try to do it the same order if I remember correctly. So first up, we got the uh, Minuteman Munitions 115 grain practice stuff. Let's see how it does. Target down there is just one I had in my bag. It's probably not the best for this, so I can't see it. You guys may be able to see it a little better than I can. Uh, next up, we'll do the 147 grade Wilson combat stuff. It's supposed to be match grade ammo, so we'll see, right? As always, the shooter has a lot of input too. And lastly, we'll 
go with the relatively hot stuff, the 115 grain federal plus P plus. Send these routes down there in a hurry. Go check it out. Not too shabby there. And one thing I want to point out is the wind's consistent. So what you guys see out here is the same thing we were shooting in back there. For some reason, you generally can't see the wind as much. Don't know why. Anyway, uh, moving on. We'll go to the first group. I believe we have two rounds of the same hole. The video, you guys probably know that better than I do at this point. We'll check it out though. Um, but on that one, we're at two and a quarter inches with the minute ammunition stuff. And then we moved down here with 147 grain, very interestingly. Uh, with that 147 grain, we had POI right about uh, an inch lower so than the other ones from where I was holding off. With that Wilson round, 147 grain, we were right at an inch and a half. So pretty tight. These are inch grid squares, for those of you guys that are watching at home and wondering. I suppose that's everyone. And... Uh, with that federal 115 grain, you guys can see right there, center to center, we're looking right at one inch. So uh, that would be, you know, extended out a two inch group at 100 yards, three inch group at 100 yards, and just over a four inch group at 100 yards. So for a pistol caliber carbine, that's pretty accurate. I'll take that all day long. Getting into the details, we'll start up front. We do have our Q-Comp flash suppressor. It's comp is in the name, but it is a flash suppressor. It is closed on the bottom, so that way if you're shooting from the prone, you're not going to have dust kick up and get in your sight picture and stuff like that, so that's certainly good. Uh, it's threaded onto the barrel. It has standard AR-10 style threads, so any of your suppressors, uh, aftermarket flash hiders, whatever the case may be, will work on there just fine. The barrel here is actually pretty unique. So what it is, it's a carbon steel barrel with a polymer coating. So before they put that polymer coating on there, they parkerize it, then put the polymer coating on there. So it's actually quite cool. Wilson Con Combat did a lot of testing, and uh, when they tested these barrels specifically, they found out that they were, in their testing anyway, the most accurate. So you guys uh, saw the accuracy of this one so far. Of course, if you worked up a load, it could always be better. But pretty good accuracy for sure. I believe they're saying that all of them shoot right around an inch and 50 yards at least, if not better. So with pistol ammunition, that's obviously pretty good. So I think it's kind of just cool to see the different material on there. Uh, this one, of course, is fluted. They do have a non-fluted version. So I suppose it's either preference at that point, but you're going to save a little weight with the fluting. Plus, it looks cool. Um, but definitely kind of cool technology and uh, R&D going into that barrel. Covering that barrel is Wilson Combat's trim rail system so that stands for tactical rail interface modular you can see here this one comes almost all the way out to the end on this 16 inch barrel but of note we should kind of get into that concept here uh, when you're actually ordering this uh, gun from Wilson Combat when you go through like their little list of drop down menus you pick all your colors you pick the length of the rail you pick the length of the barrel you pick the colors of your receiver all that stuff um, kind of assembling your gun together to your specs so this one want a little bit of a longer rail just to cover up that barrel give it a nice sleek profile but if you want something shorter to save a little bit of weight you certainly can do that on to the details of the rail. It has key mod interface along the 6, 3, and 9 o'clock positions. has our QD sling swivels on both sides back here. And uh, you can see up top, we have, they actually milled out the middle of the 1913 style rail to save a little bit of weight. But of course, any of your standard Picatinny attachments will still fit on there just fine. And one thing I just want to point out with uh, Wilson Combat that you always get is just the fit. The fit and the finish, everything's aligned perfectly. Uh, there's almost no gap at all in between there. It just lines up perfectly. Um, it's almost like one straight rail all the way down. The upper and lower receiver are both made out of billet 7075 T6 aluminum. Of course, this one here has the gray finish on there but there are a number of finishes that are available. It's got a lot of really cool things going on. Number one, it has some cutouts here, lightning cuts, that not only look good, but of course, lighten up the rifle. You can see it's cut out where it doesn't need to be saving that weight. We have a nice and large trigger guard here for shooting with gloves. And one thing that's really nice is this right here. The bevel on that magwell is huge. So this obviously is the uh, Glock magazine. Uh, pistol caliber carbine. They make them that accept both the M&P and the Breda like we mentioned earlier. So all of them are going to be similarly opened up though. So those mags, which are all double stacked in a single stack anyway, are really going to find their way home pretty quickly there. So definitely like that. It looks good and it also functions very well. So 
We have our uh, mag release here. You can see it's kind of hinged. It works really well. Drop mags drop free. Both uh, Glock mags and the Magpul mags that we've tried here drop free. However, uh, of note, when using mags, Wilson Combat only recommends factory Glock mags, and um, they don't recommend the aftermarket ones, of course. Uh, so I tried the Magpul ones, as you guys have seen throughout this video. One thing about the Magpul mags is they don't lock the mag back, uh, or the bolt back rather, on the last round. The Glock factory mags all do, so that's certainly a good thing. Uh, I do like that. A lot of the pistol caliber carbines don't have that. And moving back over, we do have ambidextrous safeties that come on it. So you can see on both sides, for our safety, it's a little bit smaller there on the right side for right-handed shooter preference, of course. And the grip on the pistol is a hybrid. It starts its life as a BCM grip and, of course, has that Starburst Wilson Combat logo and pattern etched in there. It really does a good job of not only giving you very good comfort for shooting, but it gives you a real good positive grip on there. I like that Starburst grip pattern. It works well. On the guns that are configured as carbines, you're going to get the Rogers Superstock on there. It's a good stock all the way around. I actually have a few of them on other rifles, but you just pull that little lever and extend it out. And uh, wherever you want it to be, once you lock it in, you pull that little uh, latch up and it'll really snug it down for you there. Uh, you can see our extension, just a standard mil spec ex extension. has good staking on the castle nut all the way around as well to ensure that it's not going to come free with use. Disassembling the rifles, pretty standard stuff. Uh, you're just gonna push your pins across. We're using our uh, always useful Glock disassembly tool. Push that across. And the reason I'm using a tool is because it's actually quite snug. Now there's a few reasons why it's snug, but one of the big ones is that little uh, O-ring seal down there. So that thing, when you actually push the lower and upper together, it, it compresses and causes it to sit very, very tight, giving you a nice fit. Of course, one thing that's gonna be the case on any of the Wilson Combat Rifles anyway, is that the machining is so precise, the fit is awesome as it is. So uh, there's a few things we got going on here, you guys can see. We have the uh, M2 trigger on there, and that is an awesome trigger. I actually have one of these on another rifle of mine, um, but really good trigger. Nice clean break, and uh, breaks right around four pounds, and really good short reset. So we'll do that again real slow. And it's just crisp, it breaks like glass. I'm a big fan of the Wilson Combat Triggers for sure. We've discussed that before here on the channel, I suppose. Uh, the buffer there is, uh, of course, a proprietary buffer here for Wilson Combat. The spring there is a flat wire spring that Wilson Combat uh, has made themselves for this rifle. So a lot of R&D went into it and uh, to ensure it runs well. And this one here has ran 100%. So it looks like they're doing a pretty good job so far, but that's the lower receiver. For the upper receiver, just pull on your charging handle. And as you can see there, the bolt and bolt carrier are all one piece because it is a straight blowback designed weapon system. So one thing that's kind of cool though, and you notice when you look in there, is that the barrel itself has a really nice um, ramp on it. So that way any sort of hollow point bullets or anything like that that you're wanting to feed in there are gonna feed very reliably. When you couple that with how high up that Glock magazine sits in there, it almost goes straight in. Like if you ever look at a Beretta M9, you'll notice that the feed angle feed angle is very straight. This is very similar to that, even with the Glock magazine. So that's certainly a good thing as aided in reliability as we've seen so far in the video. Um, our bolt has the cool Wilson Combat logo on one side. It looks really nice. You can see we're starting to get some good old fashioned honest wear there because I have been uh, shooting this pistol, a, a rifle I should say, a good bit. Uh, one thing this rifle will do is uh, make you want an ammo sponsor. So thanks again to Bitman Munitions for helping us out there. Um, you can see we have really good staking up here on the key. Uh, of course, it's not actually a gas key because it is a blowback operated design. The charging handle here is the ambidextrous Bravo Company Voltor gunfighter charging handle. So either side you pull on, it will release that charging handle and you can run the action to the rear. Hopefully we didn't bore you with all those details, but I just wanted to make sure you guys kind of understood all the different things that go into making this rifle what it is. So um, like we talked about, it's been 100% reliable, which is always number one for me. And one thing to point out that I'm not sure I mentioned thus far is that a lot of the internal parts are proprietary. So you can't just go out and buy like a Colt 9mm bolt and throw it in there. Uh, Wilson did tons of R&D to come up with the system that they thought was going to be the most reliable and run the best. And uh, this is it. So a lot of the internal parts are not you know interchangeable with other nine millimeter ARs out there so just keep that in mind um, uh, one thing I know folks are always gonna ask about when it comes to Wilson combat is the price point so the one with the fluted barrel like we have here I believe is $2,100 and without the fluted barrel just the standard barrel is I believe $1,999 so 
certainly not cheap at all, but compared to some of the other Wilson offerings, like uh, some of their 1911s, it's actually a little bit less than that. And if you look around, there's not a ton of really low cost nine millimeter carbines on the, on the market. And really Wilson isn't competing with them anyway. Uh, obviously they're bringing the best fit and finish that I've ever seen on the market with their rifles. Um, this one's no exception. The fit and finish are simply flawless. Any sort of nicks or anything like that that you see have been the doing of this guy or some of my family members. And uh, in terms of performance, we can't complain with the accuracy or reliability. So that's certainly a good thing. So a lot of people are asking, why would you want a nine millimeter rifle, carbine, or whatever the case may be? Well, there's a few reasons, right? So certain things, if you only have like a Glock 19 or a Glock 17, and you want to get a rifle to give you a little bit more capability to shoot at distance, uh, this certainly will do that. It's fun to be out there on the range with, which is certainly a valid reason, but I think something that a lot of people overlook. Uh, a couple months ago now, uh, it was July 4th, we had a bunch of my family members in town, I was hosting them, and uh, they wanted to go out and shoot to celebrate 4th of July. So we brought this out and there was a lot of new shooters, a lot of inexperienced shooters, a couple of kids out there, and everyone who shot this rifle thought it was awesome, had a good time with it. Uh, Mrs. Guns and Gear had it, and she said, I want to keep this one, so. I like this one. <laughs> I guess we're keeping this one, but <laughs> but um, really, really fun gun to shoot for sure. Uh, as a suppressor host, it would be awesome. I think really in the little pistol configurations they come in with that uh, the little tactical blade thing they have on there, I think it would be awesome as well. Very good to travel with because uh, with a pistol, you don't need to uh, file forms with the ATF to cross state lines, which is certainly good. So there are a lot of uses for it. Now, uh, if you're going to talk about SHTF type scenarios, I would definitely recommend in this size weapon system to use a rifle, but certainly this would get the job done as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions that we didn't cover in this video, you can always ask those down below in the comments section. You can also ask those over at my Facebook page as always, but thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing and we'll see you in the next video.